Hi everybody. So today you're going to see some glare in my glasses for a few minutes and then I will shut the screen off so the glare goes away. But um, we're going to talk, we're, this is my intro into seven things that narcissists say during an argument. Now, I had to put my thoughts down on paper because you guys, sometimes I just don't want to lose my thoughts. And I know that some of you are having a hard time hearing me, so I'm going to try and read this without going away too far and speaking up. But after I read this, we'll discuss it a little bit. And then my next video will be the number one thing, and we'll discuss it too. Now, I may, because I always have some deep thoughts. And you guys, I wing my videos. You know what? It's all from up here. I very seldom have anything written down. And, and, and because of that, I forget to say a lot of stuff that I want to say. So, with that being said, I am going to... <laughs> I'm still trying to get the glare out of my glasses. I am going to read my thoughts. And I want you to listen very closely to these thoughts. Because we could talk about this stuff. You guys, there are so many people who have reached out to me because of narcissism. And, and I have to tell you that no contact. I'm going to repeat this to you every time. No contact is the best way. Now, if you have had contact, I don't want you to beat yourself up over it. You guys, I took my narc back over a hundred times. You know, most of us, uh, most of us have, we believe that people change. We believe people say when they say they're sorry. And narcissists are one of the best at conning you. They are the best liars in the world. Absolute best. Okay. <laughs> yeah. They don't mean it. Uh, they'll cry. They'll be sincere. And then it happens all over again. So without further ado. Oh, what I was going to say about me taking my narcissist back to 100 times. See, I just forget what, I'm, what I want to touch on. Don't feel bad. If you've taken your narc back time and time and time again, and it could be time and time and time again until one day you won't take them back anymore. Now, if they're physically abusive, you need to leave now. Call a domestic uh, violence shelter. They'll get you out. Call the police. They'll get you in a domestic shelter. But you need to get out now if you're being physically abused. It's bad enough with the emotional abuse and the mental abuse, but 90% of us don't want to admit it's even happening, let alone seek, it, seek help. Okay, so with all that being said, I know, right? God, what a day. I can't even get my tickle on right. <clears throat> Let's, let me read my thoughts on this issue. They're heavy thoughts, guys. I have a lot of heavy thoughts about this system. Yeah. Okay. Narcissists are unwilling or unable to resolve conflicts or participate in discussion in a healthy, mature manner. Bottom line. Narcs argue in bad faith. Or even worse, they're dedicated to deliberately misunderstanding and mischaracterizing others often to the point of absurdity. They are will, willingly dishonest, deceptive, and morally corrupt, often, often accusing you of the very thing that they're guilty of. Mirroring. Yeah, and then you try to change. Anyway, let me get, let me get this read. I could go off on a, on a hundred different subjects. Um... They think that they are masters in conflicts and let you know that. Projection, their negative feelings are yours. So whatever they say to you is actually them projecting how they feel. Yeah, be very careful of that. It, it's actually a hint. It helps you to understand what's going on in their sick little brains. It's pieces of trash that they are. 
expect the fight of your life. <laughs> uh, narcissistic abusers love to play the blame shifting game. Okay, guys, that that is the bottom line. Let me shut this screen off. Okay. Woo! Got a little dark, didn't it? Hello. <laughs> Let's see if we can add a little eye light to the subject. So anyway, when we talk about narcissists and we talk about blame shifting, the very thing that they accuse you of is what they're guilty of. I'm just saying. And it could be from stealing money to cheating to uh, picking the fight. My narc used to pick the fight so he could go out and be with somebody else. I'm telling you, they're trash bags. <laughs> These are trash bag human beings and they're, they're disgusting human beings. They, they have nothing but selfish motives that's all they're after, guys, is their selfish motives. They are so hollow that they have to become part of what you are. But in, the, in, in that, when they fight with you, they come back at you with the very things that they're guilty of or things that you have shared with them. And you know what? I said it once before in another video. I asked my narc to shut off a light switch. And we fought for like three hours. And the whole thing was over light switch. Um, one time he picked a fight for me talking too much. Yes, I can be a chatterbox. But those are the kind of fights that used to occur. So when you find yourself in a fight with a narcissist. <laughs> hunker down. Because it's going to be one of the most verbal humiliating, emotionally draining, and harming argument you'll ever be in in your life. Ever. But the thing is, is we have to stick up for ourselves. Because these pieces of trash will walk all over us if we let them. So, it's, it's really a catch-22. You know what? If you argue with them, they're going to beat you up. Either verbally or emotionally or some people physically. Or if you don't stick up for yourself, the abuse is going to get worse and worse and worse and worse. Um, you guys, I have to say that I have a few people who've reached out to me. And I want you to understand that narcissist abuse is one of the worst kind of abuse besides physical that there is. Um... It gave me PTSD. Um, I was on medicine. I had what they call um, oh, night terrors. It was horrible. It was just amazingly horrible. I lost so much of who I was that I had to go away and just figure out who I was again. So as they take away our personalities and who we are, our values, our morals, <laughs> our money. Yeah. It's self-respect. They will take it all if you let them. But we're going to talk about how they fight and what they fight about. And maybe that will help you just a little bit know how to fight back when you have to stick up. <clears throat> Sorry. Get a drink of coffee. This is coffee with Tammy. <laughs> Maybe you'll learn a little bit on how to stick up for yourself. And not only stick up for yourself. To walk away with that little bit of self-love, respect, and dignity. That it's going to take to pull you out. And keep you healthy. Absolutely. And make no mistake about it. The only way. And I mean the only way to get away from a narcissist is no contact. And I'm not talking 10 days, a month, 30 days, 60 days. I'm talking years. Because I talked about a harem, a narcissist harem on my other channel. And they always have a harem. Always. 
Well, when they get really, really old, they don't have a harem anymore because nobody will with them. <laughs> a charming, good-looking person is gone. So anyway, as we get ready to discuss this, you guys, I will not be dropping more than one video a week. I'm extremely busy right now with health and house improvements and, and uh, doing things around the house with myself, with my dog. It's, I'm just very busy right now and I have my other channel so once a week I will drop a video and we're it's going to be seven weeks guys but you know what it's worth listening to if nothing else it will teach you how to spot a narc in an arg argument in a heartbeat <laughs> in a heartbeat so anyway I'm sorry it took me so long to start this um, I actually looked for four hours yesterday, you guys, for my notes on this because I was going to start this series a long time ago and I didn't get around to it. Then the eating disorders came up, which I could make more videos on that alone, but I really needed to get this narcissist video out. You know, guys, when they leave... Some people are devastated for a lifetime. Some people don't dig their way out from the abuse of a narcissist because they will leave you a quivering glob of shit on the floor and laugh at you. And you will not be valuable to them until they need something from you again. They're not going to call and ask you back unless they need something. If they got a new girlfriend or boyfriend and they've been gone for months and all of a sudden the girlfriend or boyfriend left because they figured it out, they'll be calling you. Because in their sick little minds, you are always going to be theirs. It's called the harem. That's why no contact is so important. So anyway, I hope you guys have a great weekend. I hope you have a blessed Sabbath, whatever day you celebrate. Remember to love yourself. That is the key. Self-love, self-respect, self-nurturing are all the things that are going to pull you out. And if you can't get out, make a list. I'm going to tell you right now and we'll discuss it later. Make a list of the five things you like to do before they walked into your life. Make number one your number one favorite and then work your way down. And start doing them. And don't think you're going to enjoy them again anytime soon. But you, it will pull you out. It will give you something to do and keep your little mind busy. Because my little mind sure needed to be busy. Yeah. Anyway, remember to love yourself. It's so important. It's so important. And give forward. Yeah, whether it's from your hand, your heart, or your pocket. It will come back to you. And you will be blessed. So anyway, I'll see you next week. Peace out.